what is the most important aspect in recovery from chronic illness, uh, long COVID, CFS. And I, I could say many different things here. Um, I could probably make a bunch of videos with the same title saying this is the most important factor in actually recovering. But there's just one thing, one factor that really is going to determine whether one can recover, whether one will recover and when one will start recovering. When you start to do this, that's when change is going to start happening. And again, I'm always speaking from personal experience. I'm speaking from my journey and what looking back and everything I've learned and what I continue to learn, um, what is, what is applicable and what I can see is going to be applicable for everybody else. So what, this is what, what changed for me and, and that is doing the work. So taking things from an intellectual understanding to the actual practical level and to elaborate what I mean by this. It's so easy to spend all of our time researching, to spend all of our time looking for solutions, um, spending time on the internet, even when we find an applicable solution. So uh, what I share on this channel, it's all about um, going directly to the symptoms, working with the bodily sensation, practicing meditation and becoming aware of your own reactions, because that is honestly what this is entirely about is it's the reaction to the sensations entirely my um through my whole recovery journey that's what was changing and that's only when things started changing for me was once i started meditating and becoming aware of my own reactions to the symptoms and how that was driving the symptoms that uh, the more i reacted out of fear and as I've, I've spoken about on this channel, resistance and aversion, trying to get rid of, um, the stronger the symptoms became. And you almost need a level of, that's why I recommend meditation so much, because you need a level of awareness. Because I was doing that unconsciously beforehand. I didn't even know that that's how I was reacting to the symptoms. You know, I just wanted to recover. I just wanted to make this go away and get my old life back. I didn't realize that when the symptoms came up that I was fighting them so much that I was resisting them. And then that comes out in doing so much research to find a way out to get rid of this, to find a supplement that's going to fix this. Um, so what has to change is things have to go from an intellectual um, level of looking for solutions to, and that's why I, I've said this before, the, the work is incredibly simple, but it's incredibly difficult. It's not easy work. And that's why it's the last place you're going to look. It's the the last solution that you want. You want, and I wanted, a solution that didn't require me to feel the really uncomfortable stuff. But the more I fought that and tried to find another way out, my life just got narrower and narrower and narrower, and all those options shut off, shut off. And from my perspective at the time, I was getting worse and worse and worse, and now I can't do this anymore. Now I can't do that anymore. Until I was left with absolutely no choice and I had to go inward. That was literally all that I, I could do anymore. And that's when things started to change. So it's so easy to get caught. In, and, we, and this is really not just applicable to recovery. It's applicable to 
what I'm sharing, I just got back from a 10 day uh, meditation, a really in, intensive Vipassana meditation course. And it's one of the main fundamental aspects of getting to the roots of your suffering is direct experience. It doesn't matter if you learn, because again, what that's all about is, is not reacting. So you can learn to not react to something. You can watch my videos and you can hear me saying you need to work with your reaction to the symptoms. And you can understand that and you can read a book about meditation and you can watch videos and listen to podcasts and all of that. And you can read as many books as you want, but that's not going to change um, it's helpful and it's where you have to start. You, you need intellectual understanding. Um, but it, it, this is, so this is, if what I'm talking about in the title of my video, what is the one thing that's going to decide whether you recover or not, is then do you actually do the practice, right? Um, that's why this retreat that I just went on, this meditation course, was so important because I since I've recovered, there hasn't been that pressure to do the work. So I decided to put myself in an environment where I had no choice but to actually do the work. And it just made it so clear how you can, you can watch videos, you can read books as much as you want, but until you actually take that step to do the work, to actually, you have to see it happening on an experiential level. So it's the same as everything I'm saying with working with emotions, that if you stop fighting the emotion, if you stop fighting the symptom, if you stop fighting the sensation, it will pass. It will, it just needs to be felt, right? It's the resistance that's keeping it there. But until you experience that for yourself, until you actually sit down and be like, I'm going to feel whatever I need to feel, and you maybe practice some meditation, become aware of the sensations in your body, you become aware of the symptoms that you that are bothering you the most and that you don't want to feel and you feel into it and you feel into it and you have to do that work yourself. My videos are, can be incredibly helpful and it is so helpful to have somebody that's walked the path before you to, um, to show you the way. That's, that is incredibly helpful and I, I needed that as well. But then the next stage and this is where the rubber hits the road. This is what decides if you're going to recover or not, is then do you actually do the work? And as much as I mean, this can be a, a frustrating thing to hear because we don't want to hear that we actually have to, we have to do the, the, the nitty gritty, um, the uncomfortable work. But trust me, that is the most powerful work. That is the, it's so worth it, right? To go, and sit in the, those uncomfortable sensations and to not react, right? So um, to learn to feel what's here without trying to change it. So that's what I, if you, if you want to try one of my guided meditations on the channel, I'm, uh, that's what those are about, is just be with what's here. But so you can do that, you can, you can scan your body and, and, and just feel into what's here. I, I highly recommend doing a meditation practice as well if you don't already to make oneself more aware of one's reactions because you're going to get caught up in the thoughts. When you feel into something uncomfortable, we kind of avoid it by immediately jumping back into the thoughts and then the mind starts wandering, right? You'll notice this if you if you're new to meditation and you start meditating and you want to focus your attention on something and it kind of, um, it, it gets difficult and then the next thing in your mind you've been wondering. So a simple meditation practice like focusing attention on, on the breath coming in and out of the nose. So just sitting, set a timer for like 15 minutes, 20 minutes and set the intention. It's really powerful to set an intention because your mind's going to wander, but if you set your intention that I'm going to hold my attention at the nose, each time the mind wanders, you're just like, oh, 
my mind was wandering. I'm going to bring my attention back to the sensations, so the direct sensations of breathing at the, at the nose. And it doesn't matter if your mind wanders for 5 minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes. It, uh, you, you start where you're at. And then each time that you notice that your mind has wandered, that, that moment where you wake up from the thoughts. So um, I'm meditating. It's 10 minutes in and you realize you've been thinking about what your plans are for the rest of the week. And that doesn't mean that you suck at meditating. That's the natural reaction is then to react to being lost in thought. Rather, that moment where some part of us is like, I need to be meditating, not thinking. We wake up in that moment and that's what you're training uh, with meditation, like, like a focused meditation practice. So keep, the more you practice, if you practice twice a day for 20 minutes and then you do that for a while and you do twice a day for half an hour and then twice a day for 35 minutes or whatever, start, start where you know you can. If we keep doing that, you're going to start waking up quicker. So maybe your mind wanders for five minutes, maybe it wanders for two minutes, maybe it wanders for one minute. Eventually, you'll have a basic awareness of your breath at your nose, even if your mind starts wandering, but you're still aware and then you bring your attention back to your nose. So that's a practice that I highly recommend um, because it, it really helps Otherwise, we're just caught up in the reactions to the symptoms without even knowing it, right? So once I was, I was practicing that for an hour a day, um, in the morning, I would sit for an hour, um, focus on the breath at the nose, um, and then throughout the day, I was working with my symptoms. I was uh, feeding into it, and then I would really practice these deep compassion practices as well of can I meet the most uncomfortable thing in my body, in my experience, with love, with kindness? So in the Vipassana meditation course that I just did, it, it's talking about equanimity with bodily sensations because what's driving all this, the suffering is reaction to sensations. And if you're going to react to the sensations, I would say it can be really powerful to do it with love, no matter what's there. So... Um, equanimity is important, but when you're really struggling with something, I would say, um, and, and, you, and you see yourself resisting that sensation, you become aware of that's what you don't want to feel, then to meet that, to, to actively and consciously, can I welcome this sensation? And it, I've mentioned this a couple of times before, and it's, it's, a, it's a really, it's a light bulb moment when we realize that even the part of us that's resisting because now we start to resist the resisting because you're like okay i need to welcome what's here i need to not react i need to be with what's here can you you can welcome that as well that was the game changer for me it was when i realized that even the resistance itself is just something that's arising and it can be welcomed and, and it's again, it's, it's about not identifying. So once you, you can become aware of thoughts as thoughts, as reactions as reactions, as symptoms as, as sensations, and, and not identify with them, then you can see, oh, that's resistance. Resistance is welcome. As opposed to, I don't want this to be here. How do I fix this? How do I stop resisting? That is resistance. Oh, okay. Resistance can be here. Incredibly powerful shift is, is when we can realize that even when it feels like this shouldn't be here then you welcome that okay resistance you can be here and the the best approach for for welcoming and working with the difficult stuff as i mentioned is this compassionate approach and you can you can literally talk to your symptoms you can say it's okay you can be here. What I used to say was, I'm going to make, there's space here for whatever wants to be here. There's so much space in my experience for the uncomfortable stuff. Um, if I'm feeling pain, if I'm feeling 
whatever symptom was bothering me at the time and obviously it fluctuates and varies and it was always some sort of contraction or tension in the body um you know we get so uncomfortable during flare-ups and crashes can i make space for all of that to be here and it's okay i love you i love you too i accept you just as you are because that is that is not trying to change if you can say to the the really difficult stuff i accept you to be in my experience right now i accept that this is what's happening and not try to change that that's that's where recovery happens because what you're doing is you're training your unconscious reaction in your mind because as i mentioned earlier what's happening with symptoms is we're unconsciously telling our body that this is bad and it shouldn't be here and we should resist it and then even when we're not aware of it we're resisting more and that's why we trigger these crashes where you get a symptom and then you know all the thoughts are saying um this has happened before this leads to a crash i'm so scared and that triggers more resistance to the symptom and but all of that's kind of happening unconsciously so when we train ourselves to be okay with the symptom as it is, then it will start to play out on its own as you go out and now you, you start to challenge yourself a little bit and go for a five or 10 minute walk if that was your boundary. Whatever, it, it really doesn't matter where you're starting. If you, you can just get up out of bed and walk to the front door, if that's a big deal for you, that's a big deal for you. If you can go for a 20 minute cycle, then that's where you start. But what happens now is unconsciously we're training our mind to be okay when a symptom comes up and then our whole crash cycle doesn't get triggered. And that's why I always say if you're having a bad day, these are the days where you make recovery happen. Where, and you make it happen by not trying to change what's there. So it's... Um, it can sound like, oh, I'm going to make recovery happen. But it's not through sheer will and force. Will and effort can be very helpful in getting you to have the courage to sit with what needs to be sat with, right? It's very easy to just give in and distract. I mean, that's the key here is when I was distracting my because a crash would happen it was so uncomfortable in the body and just you know whatever i can to uh take my mind off it to avoid it can i just listen to a podcast oh that makes symptoms worse you know what can i do and that's why i said i got driven to the point where all i could do was be with what's here and if you can welcome it if you can accept it then that's how recovery happens so on those tough days when it feels like you've lost your recovery path. You were doing so well, making so much progress, and bam, here's the symptoms. It's 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 a good thing. Um, it's a it's a not a great thing to experience. It's not what you want to feel, but it's essential on the recovery path. And and this is then where the rubber meets the road. Is can you do the work? And it's. You will do it when you're willing to do it, right? For me, I, I kind of had to exhaust all other roads and options and things kept on getting worse and worse and worse until I finally accepted that, okay, I can live my rest of my life like this or I can do the work. And I, I'd been learning. I, I kind of knew at that point what I needed to do, but I would still rather read a book about it or, or find, you know, watch a video about it uh, which again is helpful, but um, eventually you have to commit to doing what you need to do. So, yeah, it's key on those those tough days to to sit with the symptoms and commit to start with what works for you. You know, do set a timer. That it's a really it's a small thing, but it's it's so helpful because uh, even for myself now when I meditate. If I just sit, and I sometimes do because I, I, I think it's a good practice as well, where I just sit and uh, no, no timer, but it's so easy to 
get caught up in the thoughts. As soon as something gets uncomfortable, we don't even realize it. We're suddenly caught up in the thoughts. And the next thing I'm thinking, let me just quickly go make a cup of coffee. Let me quickly go check Twitter. Let me do this. Let me do that. And I, and I identify with that thought. And then I, uh, I follow it along the thought train. And I get up. Whereas if I've set a timer of I'm going to meditate for the next half an hour. Or I'm going to feel into my body for the next half an hour. Hour. Whatever I set my timer at. When those thoughts come, I can't grab onto them. Because maybe I'll follow them like I'll get lost in thought. But I can't get up and go get a cup of coffee because I've committed now. I can do that when, the, when my timer bell goes. Then I can do that. And that's why setting that intention for the next 30 minutes, I'm going to feel into what's the body. So then when I'm thinking about, uh, I'm going to get a cup of coffee after this. Um, well, I've made the intention. I'm, so to add on to that intention, you can say, I'm going to spend the next whatever time you set to only do this. I'm only going to meditate. I'm only going to feel into my symptoms. I'm only going to do compassion practice for my symptoms. So then when the thoughts start coming, it's like, I'm not, oh, I'm not, I'm not here to think about coffee. I'm not here to think about lunch. And again, you're going to get lost in thought until you become aware. But setting those intentions at the start of your practice can be really powerful to, it kind of helps to um, like, gather your mind um, because often if I just sit down and meditate my mind's all over the place a little bit so it's like okay I'm going to just sit and meditate and I jump straight into it I um, it's very much easier to get lost in thought if I set the intention like okay I'm sitting here to meditate what is my intention to focus on the sensations in the body my intention is to use this time to practice diligently and what I mean by practice diligently is it doesn't matter how many times I get lost in thought. I'm not going to just give in and, and then start thinking. Every time I get lost in thought and I realize, I will start again. I will diligently and with, there's no need to get frustrated with yourself. There's no need. And sometimes it will happen. But again, as soon as you catch it, just realize that you're going to get lost in thought. And that's absolutely fine. When, but you don't want to fuel that. You want to be, as soon as you, get, you realize you're lost in thought, bring that attention back to whatever your intention was. So that's practicing diligently is um, I'm setting aside this time to do my practice. It doesn't matter how many distractions come. I'm going to practice. This time is for, for whatever this practice is. And making these intentions is really powerful. Um, for your practice it's just the, the mind because we're not controlling the when the mind starts wondering you know you, you don't choose what the next thought is what the next thought is but when we set these intentions it's really powerful um, because that's kind of what helps to kick in the part of us that wakes wakes up it's like oh I had this intention to be focusing on my breath or my body or whatever by setting that intention there, we, we're putting it in our mind that that's what we're here to do. And then eventually that's where the thought train will lead. Thinking, 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 oh, set this intention. Then set the intention again. Okay, I woke up from my thoughts. I'm going to feel into the body. Whatever, you know, so that you can apply that to your... Um, that, that's really helpful for a focused meditation practice. And then if we just want to feel into what's here, it can be a more of an open practice. It can be... I'm going to go to the most uncomfortable part of my experience and I'm just going to feel it. So then you're not, uh, you're not trying to keep attention uh, fixed on a certain point. Maybe you are, but you're really just trying to feel deeply into the body then. So altogether, yeah, that would be that, that whole everything I've just kind of run through there is that's the keys to the recovery path. That's really it. But then, then the, the key here is do you watch this video and then apply it? And again, start with what you can do. So it can be scary to hear this message and because it's not what you want to hear. Like I, I said earlier, is it's, we, we have to go to the, the last place we want to go. We have to feel the uncomfortable stuff. 
So to make it doable, don't set yourself a goal that is so easy to dismiss. So, okay, I listened to this video. From now on, for two hours a day, I'm going to feel into this without, without distracting myself. If you can do that, brilliant. That will be so helpful for you. But if you haven't ever done this before, you know, if you could only meditate for five minutes, then start with six minutes. Do something that you know you can't convince yourself otherwise of. Okay, I know for 10 minutes, for 15 minutes, for 20 minutes, whatever, start where you're at and then be willing to keep building it up from there because you will, you will start to then get the direct experience I'm talking about. You have to see it for yourself that what I'm talking about in these videos is not for you to just understand. It's for you to understand and then for you to experience yourself, for you to go and sit with the symptoms, with the sensations, feel into it and realize that 10 minutes of sitting with the most uncomfortable part of my experience actually helped. Then next time you have that direct experience, you know that that's what you need to do. So that's the key here is taking the next step. You really have to shift from uh, learning, learning, researching to doing the work. And then that's all you need to do eventually. It can be still super helpful to, um, to get motivation and um, learn, um, you know, get help um, and stuff. I was always still watching meditation videos and listen to guided meditations and uh, consulting the books that I read. But that was like 10% of the work and 90% of the work was actually um, doing, doing the, the, the actual practical work myself. So great to watch a video every now and then and then go and apply it. Um, and again, a great place to start is guided meditations. If you struggle, they can be so helpful because it's helping you through it, right? It's, it's giving you, you guidance. Um, so yeah, all in all, that's, um, that's really key uh, in this journey. So good luck. Um, it's tough work. It's scary work. But I want to say that you, no matter what the mind says, you can do the work. So there can be so much doubt in the mind. Oh, but I can't meditate for that long. I can't feel into my symptoms. That's just the mind. That's just thoughts. Uh, trust me when I say that start with where you're at, but you can, you can do the work. You can take the next step. You, uh, you have the ability. Just be willing to jump into the scary stuff. You have to go into the unknown, into the place that doesn't feel safe. And you have to work there. And that's, that's the way through. So uh, good luck with the difficult work, but... Um, you can do it and you can, you can get through this. I've, I've done the work and gotten through and continue to do the work. And uh, no matter how scary it gets, um, the mind can say, if I feel this, I'm going to die. This is the worst thing I ever want to feel. Um, that's just the mind. Just feel it. Just go deeper. Go deeper. Um, how deeply can you feel that incredibly scary thing? Go deeper and see for yourself what's there.